Isn't it wonderful that God has brought this service to this moment? Danny, I want you to know. I want you to know that the joy of having you, the joy of having Aunt Ruth, your family, always your dad, who's not been with us recently because of his duties. But Danny, the joy of having you has been so wonderful that I'll forever be grateful to God. Mm -hmm. I'll forever be grateful for your pure and sweet spirit. I'll forever be grateful for your humility. I'll forever be grateful for the ability to put your friends, your colleagues at ease. And that comes only because of a tender, loving, kind, humble spirit. We've had a great time. We've had a great time. I came to the funeral service. I trusted God with all my heart. I enjoyed the family so much. I heard Danny's beautiful eulogy. And then stepped forward with his aid and his help. I felt it. To preach Mother's sermon. And Jim Wright, great servant of God, is in, it gets real blessed like that. And God helps us and God gives me a revelation just before I left. But I, I think it's so wonderful to be, when I have all of you and I'm with myself, that's one thing. But when, when, a, when a servant is so fine, as great as this one, and you feel his humility and his love for you, in such a way that you have freedom. Sunday morning came. I, I wish you'd have taken the steps with me. I wish you'd have been with me the night before when I was sick. I wish you'd have been with me when I got up in the morning at 5 o'clock and started my countdown. I wish you'd have been with me as I tried and worked and worked and worked. After looking at the passage for two or three weeks, I've looked at that passage. Pull the commentaries down. Tried to find what everybody had said and what outline might be and where to go, where to begin my thoughts. What's dry is dry. And finally, just before the service, one little thing, seemed little at the time, thrills me. Just a little point. Moses seeming have to, to have been an apparent failure to the people. Calling for an obedience, no deliverance. Calling for obedience, no deliverance. Calling for an obedience, no, no deliverance. Calling for obedience, no deliverance. Nine times. And then he calls for a tenth, which is absolutely... Huh. Well, a step of faith on the part of the people. Absolutely mystifying as far as the people were concerned. And yet, that step was the decisive step of faith in victory. I'm thrilled about it now. Now, what I'm saying is, here he sat, he and his beautiful wife, his dad, our people, Aunt Ruth, and here I am. I could have said more in front. I could have said more behind. But the only anointed spot was right there. So at the last minute, I titled it in the study, The Decisive Step of Faith. And I come to you and I say, now look. I know that it's not the best pulpit manners to be apologetic. And preachers would be better off simply to get up and deliver. Good, bad, medium, whatever. But I really just have uh, something on my heart I want to share with you. <laughs> Here we are in freedom and in love. And God helps me to preach 
Maybe one of the most wonderful things I've ever preached in my life. So wonderful that I took the tape home myself, which is rare for me. I've probably done that maybe two, three times to my folks. Took it over to Mother, sit down, listened to the whole sermon. Was so thrilled with it. Came back, and, and we played it in the office before the Tuesday afternoon meeting. And Danny, the, the real test is in the hearing and the rehearing and and, you know, if you can't be too bothered by your language, your phraseology, and the, and the power of that anointing comes through and grips your own heart. And I thought, how wonderful. Sunday night comes, and I think, you know, Dan and Jenny here, how can we hardly let them in and out of the place without singing? They've sung all over the world. They've sung all over. They've sung off of satellites. Uh, you know, they're excellent. Jesus... But because of them, I'll trust to do exactly what you tell me to do in the service. You may get permission. You may lead. But, Lord, I just trust you. Help me to know what to do. And we began. In a little bit, I saw that the, that the fellow should sing the duet. And they sung. And they sung. <laughs> And they sang, and God spoke. He said, you will hear our prayers now. Come to me now. And the altar opened up. And we had a wonderful altar service, and they sung. Good musicians. Uh, musicians that kept right on, even though they weren't the center of attention. Because there was other things going on. Stayed right at their post of duty. And Dan and Jenny, Dad, Aunt Ruth, are... Uh, Jenny, I forget who all of us are here, but w there we were, and they rested, and we worshiped, and we praised God in one of the few services that they've been in for many, many years where they simply rested, and that came Sunday night. He told me 15 years. He told Jeannie 15 years, first service in 15 years that they've rested not being called upon to perform in some manner or other. What if in 15 years you've been called upon to either preach, pray, sing, witness, do something, every service for 15 years? That would really be something, wouldn't it? Sunday night, they rested. And their faces helped me so much. They were so beautiful till I was at home to try to wait. You, you know, when a man knows he's pitiful, he knows he's pitiful. But it's awfully good to be in somebody's presence that loves you so much they don't know you're pitiful. You know, my assessment of myself is, is accurate. But to be in the presence of someone else who loves you so much they think you're somebody, that helps you along. And that's how, that's how they were with us. So what we have? We had freedom. So I wanted to say, all these, this is our third or fourth service now. And tonight, why would they come when we're going to adopt some bylaws? Well, we were going to do that and get them out of the way because, unless, and do what's necessary, but get past them because we need to be fed from God, right? And unless we read the, uh, the beginning of it, we'd have a hard time getting fed. And yet, here we are. God has helped us so wonderfully in this service. And we're standing on the promises. Has it been a good one? It's been a good one. Why, wow, the opening hymns were so great, I wanted to go in front of the altar here and say, Oh, it was great. It was great. And would you, res you know, I want to say to you, would you respond with me? Wouldn't you, didn't you think it was great? Wasn't it wonderful the way Jesus helped us? That's what I want to say here in front of the altar. You know, just try to get the message out. But I, I knew that the Lord wanted me up pretty close to eight, so I kept quiet. And God worked and worked through the choir. And now, through Jeannie's song, Stephen sharing, and I just wanted you to share a few words before we sing Standing on the Promises. Uh, one thing that came to my heart while uh, Pastor Oliver and Pastor Steve were uh, sharing whatever this big secret is between them. <laughs> oh, what they don't know is, <laughs> I have one of my own.
Uh, I didn't. I didn't ever think about ever sharing this in a, in a public assembly. I haven't told Dan. I haven't told Daddy. I mentioned a little something to Johnny and Mary the other night because we were in the bedroom talking about things. But um, Mother had a revelation that she never told anyone but me. And it was uh, because it, it, in, it involved me more than anyone else. And uh, she believed so strongly in what the Lord had shown her. And we sort of shared a dream. And she, uh, at the waiting on God in July, she had told Betty and she had Betty Joyce and myself that that was the one thing that she wanted to live for was to see this come to pass. And uh, and I I remember telling her that I that I hope the Lord did that because I thought she it would be a fulfillment for her because. Uh, I had caused her so much, now I'm not being sad, but I had caused her so much heartache with different trials and things, and that this would sort of be a, a crowning thing for me to be able to make her that happy. And um, so I, I don't think I really thought the Lord would take her until this came to pass because it was such a desire of hers. But he did. He needed her more than I do. and But... The dream doesn't stop because because she's gone and she still dreams with me and um, the morning after she'd gone to be with Jesus I, we were changing the room back around and getting it straightened up because we had a hospital bed and medicine and things like that around and it was best just to get things back to normal quickly and uh, the Lord gave us strength to do it and do it quickly. But in the process, her Bible was laid up on the chest of drawers. And I started just to look for it, and she had such precious things written in them, uh, quotes. There were probably ten quotes. Nine were from Oliver Hogue. <laughs> <laughs> um, one was from Richard Wormbrand. It said, uh, Roses grow on crosses. And I had never, in all his writings, I don't remember reading that. But she had maybe written it when he was here or something. But uh, she, she up in the corner on one page was just, uh, said Psalm 37, 19. In little tiny writing, and I wondered, well, what on earth would that be? So I looked it up, and I was so thrilled because at it, the end it says, you shall be satisfied in famine and... I thought, oh, isn't that wonderful now? She's going to be with Jesus now. She's going to be satisfied in famine, you know, no problem for her. And, <laughs> and uh, so I went around the house in different rooms reading that to everybody. Oh, isn't this wonderful? And then Pastor was in the living room, and I gave it to him to read. And Betty was there, several others. Well, when he read it, I saw an entirely different thing when he read it. And it hit my heart. It hit Betty's heart. It hit his heart. When he read it, I saw a whole different idea of what she... She may not have meant that when she underlined it or put that in her Bible. But that day, that was, that was what she meant. And it's, it's still a promise. It's still a dream. And um, the... The Lord does everything so perfectly. The, to, to, for there to be such a healing in our family that made this all so heavenly. I didn't have any idea that death could be so beautiful, such a beautiful experience. I mean, every detail has been so beautiful. Is the only way you can describe and how it's been for me. And... I know it's because that Mother and I had perfect fellowship when she was alive. And see, there was no change in that. There was only, Mother, you have made it. You, it's over for you. 
And now I went to the graveyard yesterday and sat down beside the grave. Not sad, just wonderful because it's just like sitting. Maybe don't understand, but like sitting with her or sitting with all of heaven or whatever. And I was looking out over, all over the valley. And I said, this all belongs to you now. And when I did, it touched my heart. And then there were men working on a building, and I <laughs> they were way over, but I didn't want them to think, you know, I'd come up there and gone bananas in the graveyard. Or something. But a lot of the communication, so I just did with thought, you know, just like you would. And then all of a sudden it dawned on me, and, and I looked over and I said, you know the day. Mother, do you know the day? Well, she didn't answer. <laughs> but it just, it was like, it's almost like, uh, like friends that have a secret and won't tell you or something like that. You know, it's like, see, we, Mother and I had this great uh, dream. Now, she knows the whole thing, you see, but here I'm left, you know. I don't know what's going on. I just have to wait. And, and it's real sweet. See, that's even sweet because so it just continues she's alive the same fellowship i had is still there and um but a lot of part of the healing is in this i know that i caused my mother much heartache much but the lord has shown me through believing in brother ham that that through somehow, I don't know why I did, I don't know how I did, I know it's only by God's grace. I know there were a lot of things involved. Um, but because of that, in the, and since 1974, she's had the most happiness that she ever had in her life because she's seen all that was healed for her, all the unhappiness that I may have caused that uh, things that Johnny was in. See, that's all healed, and Johnny's happy. And Dan never caused her any trouble. <laughs> uh, he's always perfect. I want everyone to know. And she thought so. But, uh, <laughs> she thought so. <laughs> Johnny and I have the blessing of repentance. Danny just is. <laughs> He's always been. It's the truth. It's the truth. He always has. He's never caused her any heartache. But uh, I'm so thankful for that, that the Lord, the Lord knows, and he knows what's coming, and he let all this happen. And even to, to Aunt Ruth. Now, see, here's Aunt Ruth, who was in Ohio, who was far away, who wasn't close in with the family. Now we're all so close. And this experience, this beautiful experience the last few days could not have been possible if everyone, if everyone involved did not love Jesus with all of their heart. And they do. See, the whole family has been drawn in by the Holy Spirit just because yeah. of one, one, I wouldn't matter if it was me or who it was. I'm not trying to draw attention to that. Just the fact that if you'll be faithful that the Lord will bring in. I asked Jesus for my whole family, and he did it. The whole family. Boys way out in Colorado that wouldn't even go near a church. Oh, uh, an uncle who was an agnostic. They've all given their heart to the Lord, and no one talked to them about it. The Lord did it. The Lord just rescued and, and did it. So this made, see, this made the, dif the difference too. But it's been such a beautiful experience. There have been times when it's been hard and I've needed strength because, because of the closeness and tenderness that Mother and I had in the, in the past few years. It's made, you know, things a little, you know. But uh, the Lord has, has marvelously helped me to not, to not grieve or want her back. You may not understand, but I don't want her back if she's well. Yeah. She she is there. She has made it. She and when I went in the room when I went in the room came in the house the other day and she'd already gone to be with Jesus and I didn't, you know, know and when I walk in they said, Jeannie, she's gone. Well my immediate reaction 
you don't think at a time like that, I ran for the bedroom. There wasn't anyone in the bedroom, it wasn't, and I ran for the bedroom. But what was in me was I was going to run right after her. Not grabbing, oh, oh, she's gone, she's gone, and some kind of thing like that. It was more like, oh, <laughs> you have, you, you've gone, you've made it, Mother. It's, it's done. And you are safe, and you're with Jesus at last, and you're free. And there was all that wonderful, and, and I went in the room, and I would, I would embrace her, and I would kiss her, and I would laugh, and I would cry, because it was such a wonderful feeling of, of that it's over for her. See, I have a different, I guess I have a view of heaven not very many people have. I want to be in heaven. This is enemy territory for me. I don't belong here. I'm an alien here. That's how I feel. Yeah. And I, by God's grace, you make it the best you can and you be joyful. But this is not where I belong. This is darkness for me. This is the earth. And I want to be in heaven. Well, you see, that she stepped right over in there. It's almost like it's not envy in, in a way that that is a carnal envy. I, don't, I hope not. Uh, but Pastor Dave came up that night. We were all... Uh, in the bedroom where she passed away, a whole bunch of us sitting in there talking. We ended up in there. And he came in there to talk to us and stuff. And then he got ready, began to pray. And he said, uh, and uh, Mom was in Jesus' arms. And when he said it, it was for a minute, it just, uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I don't know how to explain how I felt. Uh, it's almost like if you're waiting in line to be hugged and somebody else gets hugged first. <laughs> you know, it, it, was a, it was almost like envy. It was always like, Mom, <laughs> you know, it's not like that. It, it was just for a second in me. Then it kind of scared me because I was afraid it was the wrong feeling. But it, but it was a wonderful feeling. And, and the times of weeping that I've had, I think are healthy. I think are wonderful because it's been over beautiful things. It's been over her getting taking care of her garments and things like that. It's so sacred. And I found out that death is so beautiful and so sacred and, and it's, it's so hellish that we've been taught so many things, that we've listened to so many ghost stories, that we've seen so many horror films until there's such darkness about it. I'm sure there's darkness about it when someone doesn't go to be with the Lord. I'm sure of that. But that even hampers our our blessing as people who are of the Lord and who are, whose loved ones do go on to be with Jesus before we do because we've had this junk put in us from the enemy, from the earth. And uh, there were things, Daddy could tell you that I never even went to a, a funeral till I was 16 or 17 years old. You couldn't have gotten me near the place. It was that type of thing. And, just, and to see how the Lord can heal all of that in an instant and make everything about it so beautiful. I mean everything about it. So beautiful. that uh, And the lessons that we've been taught, he, um, one, one thing, I spoke to several people, spoken to several people about it. I thought about Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And how as a, as a child and maybe as a young adult, I don't know, that we sometimes would, we might judge or not understand biblical characters the way they say things, do things. And the grief that, that Mary and Martha felt was so precious. They, um, I hope this isn't hard on anyone in the family when I talk them like this, I plead the blood. When, uh, when I was with Mother after, you know, when just her body was there, or she was there, but you know what I mean, uh, that all was so precious to me. Now, I wanted to stay there, and I wanted to wash that body, and I wanted to prepare it. Just, I could feel that all. It was so sacred to me. And, you know, it's a Jewish mitzvah that they do this. And, uh, of course, I was not allowed to do that. But that was all so backwards to my thinking and my way of feeling about things. But that's the way it was when it happened. Well, I thought about Mary and Martha. 
had done that, prepared their brother, put him in a grave. Now let me tell you, when someone is gone, they're gone. It's a beautiful experience, but they're gone. And I had never been around this kind of situation before. And I thought, I remember thinking in an instant, in that moment, when I first got up to the house, about resurrection and how miraculous it really was. Mm. I mean, we can think that in our head, but you see a lifeless uh, body there. And I mean, you would have to, it, it's just unexplainable. It would, it would have to be something. Now, if you had prepared that body yourself and laid it in a grave yourself and I, did, you know, I didn't have that experience, later on in the day, it came to my mind again, and I was thinking about how the Lord, you know, resurrected. And no wonder they said, oh, Lord, you know, don't, you know, it'll be this way and that way, and don't do that, you know. They were, they had been there. They had done it all. It was an impossible thing in the, for the mind. I can see, well, it, I, I got that little lesson. I saw the, the beauty of of resurrection. I mean, it's just really something. I, I got the, I begin to think about Jesus weeping when, when the Father told him to go raise Lazarus from the dead. Our pastor has told us, and, I've, and since he did, I've really, you know, I've seen it, it registered with me and believed that he cried, that he moaned, mm -hmm. that was awful for him to have to do because he didn't want to bring him back. Now, I understand that more now than ever. Yes, I don't want Mother to come back to this place, not after where she is, not after what we felt. We want to go there. We don't want her here. And I can see why the Lord, when the Father told him to bring Lazarus back, how very difficult that would have been on him but I saw something else that you can take it or leave it. It helped me. Um, Lazarus, we think, as much as we can tell, was his best friend. Now, Jesus was a man. Jesus was the Son of God, but he was a man. He was just, he was perfect, but he was a man. And he needed a friend. Lazarus was his friend. Now, he had made it. Lazarus had made it. He'd gone to be with the Father. He was safe. And I'm sure Jesus rejoiced in that. That was approximately, I think, a week or so before Jesus went to Calvary. I think Jesus cried because the Father loved him enough to send his friend back to be with him through that week. His dear friend, a human, someone you could hold hands with, someone you could put your arms around, someone who could look at you and in perfect community. He'd been, Lazarus had probably been with, you know, he'd been in heaven. He had that kind of fellowship also. But wouldn't it break your, it, wouldn't it break your heart if God did something like that for you? When, see, it, it, to me, that got me more than the fact that he just had to bring him back. The fact that he did it for him. When Jesus knew all involved, where we wouldn't even know as much involved as Jesus did, Jesus knew all involved, and the Father knew it, but he sent, he let him, he sent Lazarus back to be with him. And I, I'm sure that the Lord will show me more about it. That's just a little bit, you see... I guess the whole point is how wonderful the Lord has been since last Thursday. Just in teaching, right in the midst of everything, to start teaching you little lessons like this, to show you the Word made flesh, the, the beauty of... We hear that death is beautiful and, oh, we're going to go to heaven, but I, had, I, don't, I think everyone must have a certain fear even when you really want to go to heaven and be with Jesus. There are little things and things associated with death that are difficult, especially young people, I think. And uh, it's just not true. It's, it's lies. 
but I believe that you have to, you know, be obedient and, and trust Jesus to get to this place so you won't miss an experience. The other night um, at the funeral home, um, a couple of the young people in our family, it, everything was so beautiful there that they weren't feeling any burden of death and they were having a little bit of fun, which was great. And I turned around to them and I said, uh, I said, hey, if I was your age, I am sure I would be doing the same thing. I'm sure I would. Believe me. I would be, you know, making little wisecracks and doing little things. And, but if you're not real careful tonight and in the next few days, you're going to miss something that Jesus has for you. You're going to miss something real sacred. Now, I said, this will be fun, and you'll never know you missed it, but you have a choice. And they both responded beautifully. They knew it because of the teaching and the background they've had and because the Lord helped me not to just say, you all straighten up right now or something like that, you know. Um, I would have done, I'm sure that I would have done the same thing. It wasn't bad. They weren't doing anything bad. It was just that they were going to cut up and miss, I was afraid they were going to miss some, of the beautiful, some beautiful experience. And so I learned this. I learned the fact that these children, they both responded to me so wonderfully because they knew it was true. Because of the teaching they've had, they've been in the sacred. And so they didn't rebel against it and go off and say, oh, you can't have any fun. They both just smiled and just, they believed it. I could tell that they, they sincerely appreciated the fact and the fact the Lord helped me handle it the right way. There's, uh, there have been so many things. Um, there, there's just not any way to tell it all. But uh, I, I trust the only thing I can tell you is to love Jesus with all your heart. The best you know how, and that's enough. That you fail, you'll fail in many areas because of what's been done to you. I was talking to someone the other day about self-denial and what I considered it because of something past. I, to me, it's the most profound thing he said since he's been here. He said, you are you in self-denial. You are what you really are. That, when I... And things had happened to make me see exactly what, how true that was. I, I could have run all over this place. I wondered if anybody else understood what he was saying. When, when I get upset and when I'm mad, I'm not me. Now, we might think that's us and that's the carnal and that's what we are, but that is not what we are. That's what been, that is what has been done to us. That's what's been done to us. That's not what we are. We are like Adam and Eve. What's been done to us, we need, that is what we deny. And we get self-messed mess, up because we don't understand the terminology. I'm not saying I ever did. I'm just saying this is what the Lord has shown me, that we are beautiful. We, he, we have to be. We're in his image. He, he loves us and he put us here. We're like him. And, you know, when, when Pastor has said, uh, when somebody says, oh, that was a lovely, or you did something, you say, oh, that was Jesus, not me. And he said, don't say that. That is you. And then when he said that in self-denial you were really you, I knew it was true because if I get upset, I don't like me. I don't like what's going on. But if I deny myself, I feel beautiful about myself. I'm happy. I'm at peace. And I'm going to accept that that's me and not that carnal thing that's been done to me. That's the only way we're going to make it. So I, I just thought I'd, I'd share that. how the, the Lord has really helped me with that. That uh, if you can just remember that that's what's been done to you and that's not what you really are. And that self-denial is shedding that. That's the earth. That's what happened in the fall. And that's what you deny. 
That's why you don't want to do it, because you want to be really what God made you to be. And you're not, you're not ugly. You're not some carnal, oh, awful thing, and, oh, I'm never going to make it. Call. That, that's not it. Every, everyone's beautiful. Because you are God's children. God made you. How could you be anything but that? You, you are, uh, if, if we say that, then how can we believe in God? Is he beautiful? like to clarify. Yes, mother. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. That's right. You're verifying what all she said by God's grace, mother. And you're more beautiful than you were by far when dad left this earth. By God's grace. That's the effect it's had on you. It seems a shame to me that it's Peter and Paul and uh, a, a few other young lambs that have to testify in this place. I'm a young lamb, and I need, I need the saints to be faithful. Oh, yeah. And I tell you, tonight they've been faithful. <laughs> oh, praise God, I've been fed. <laughs> I wanted to clarify. Yes, brother. I want to clarify one thing. The person you heard speaking was not Mary Webster. Her name is Jeannie, but I say that to point out something else, and you just got the message. But would you be surprised if I told you I've known that for 12 years or more? Praise the Lord. Uh, we decided I wouldn't preach tonight. We said Jesus will furnish the sermon, and he surely did. Pastor, I just I wanted to relate to you yet what you and I talked about yesterday when we were sharing and I was saying how sometimes how Brother Helm has told us that we'll hear it we'll hear it from the pulpit and we'll hear it and we'll hear it and we'll hear it and we'll hear it. And in our minds we know it's true. Yes. But that's a man of God and that's his job is to tell us that and he's precious and we love him. And then he brings one in from the side one of us <laughs> and we can say that's not our pastor no. that's one of us and when brother helm told us that he said that's the reason sometimes he'll bring that one up down the aisle and they'll stand up and exhort her they'll share a truth that's so profound and yet it's it's so basic it's what god's been telling us and you sit and you think that's that's a human person. That's everyday street people. Those are everyday problem people that have everyday troubles just like we do. And if he can tell them that, then I'll go in his grace to say, I just might be worth it enough to him that if I hold on, he'll tell me something. <laughs> Certainly. Because he has. Yes, he has. But we don't give credit to ourselves. You know, as I was saying, when Brother Maurice Burke was... Fifteen years ago, when people used to ask him, where did you get such a profound statement? And he'd say, God gave it to me. And they'd say, yeah. well, I know that. But who did you collaborate with to, to arrive at that? And he said, no, God gave that to me. Yes, sir. Well, we know that, but who yes. did you read after? Who yes. did you study after to get that? No one. No. no. Uh, Burke, God talked to me about that. That's right. That's what he Because he finally believed that God considered him worthy to talk to. Yes, sir. It touches my heart. And it takes us so long to believe that God considers us worthy to talk to because we don't consider ourselves worthy. Yes, only through the blood of Christ, but we need to know that that blood has purchased our worth. And I'm so thankful yes. for a sister that's... Praise the Lord. ...was closer years ago in the first times of the waitings, but through conditions, and we drift, we, we're not close to people indirectly in our lives until God does something His way, Amen. and you just sit there in awe, and you think, that's one of us. <laughs> and I'm so thankful for it. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful that, that they have just a way of sharing it, the way you can say that oh, is terrific. So oh, my. 
And I'm so thankful for Praise Jesus' way of working in, in us. Praise the Lord. I'm just thankful for the Amen. family because I, I've seen so many more like that. I here. didn't know Aunt Kitty was here, Dan, but she's right there. And she's one of uh, Jesus' special ones, I tell you. <laughs> she's like her sister. And there she is right there. Praise the Lord, Aunt Kitty. Yeah. Annie and I were awfully close, but I know that she's someday I'll I'll meet her and we'll be together. I want everybody to know I love them very much. Uh, John and Dan and Ruth and Jeannie, I love you very much. Praise the Lord. I was encouraging of Dad to tell us that he was. They were all coming back to be with us on Thanksgiving dinner. Yes. Pastor, my heart is just really sure, sure. And I don't know if it's something that Jesus gave me today that I need to share, or if it's just that I need to praise the Lord. I don't know what it is. Yes. My guess would be the way the Holy Spirit is working that you need to praise the Lord. I. Just Praise the Lord. I'm thankful. Jesus has really helped me lately. I know. It. I could tell it. I thought I saw and your face 30 to 40 minutes ago. There have been several things. Yes. That have just, it seems like everything has hit me all at once. Yes. But I got a letter right here that I'm going to mail to my mother. I don't get to see her too much. Sure. And I have to be careful with my mother because, you know, she's, heard a lot of things about our fellowship and it's hard for her to understand but I told her that not to worry about me because you know of all the things that have happened because that Jesus had just well I didn't say Jesus because she'd think I was going off the deep end because she just has a hard time but I told her that I had a really just a peace in my heart that I could not explain That's so wonderful. but it was just like here was everything that was bothering me here was everything that was you know trying to drag me down and yes. I sit around thought about it and dwell on it it just depressed me but Jesus had just lifted me above it and here I was way above all this and here was all this down here and I mean it's still there but Jesus is just I don't know I'm just so happy I'm so, so thrilled good. I mean I just <laughs> I just can't explain it and I'm thankful when Jeannie was sharing I didn't know if it was the Lord telling me that what Jeannie was saying was true or if what he gave me today was what I was supposed to share, or if I just need to praise the Lord or what it was. You did, and you wanted to be obedient. So it's I'm helped thankful. us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I believe, uh, uh, it's Glendo, I believe. And then I saw another hand up here. I was so thankful for Jeannie because when I worked at daycare with her, I saw her like this. And it helped me so much. And I thought of her so much as a little beautiful child. Like Brother Helm has told us, we must become to enter the kingdom of heaven. And I hope everybody saw her tonight like this because this is... And I've said to Jeannie lots of times, do you know I love you? She's always said yes. And see, that's helped me. And that brought something else when she was talking about what she had caused mother heartaches. It doesn't matter what your children do to you. They can look at you and smile and say, I love you, Mother, or forgive me. And you forget them just oh, like God goodness. forgets them. And I just want to encourage you, Jeannie, that Mother don't ever remember any of them things. <laughs> and it's so wonderful. And I love you, Jeannie. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you for having those eyes all those years, Glendo. Praise the Lord. I believe to see my daughter's hand here. Does anybody, while she's getting ready to testify, does anybody in the audience have in their repertoire, not is this necessary leading, but I thought of it when uh, Dan said what he did. Does anybody have that song, Ordinary People? Anybody have that yet? Or is just, will we have to wait for Dan McGraw? It's okay. It would fit here. I didn't know if anybody picked it up yet. Yes, honey. I was just, <clears throat> I want to praise the Lord. I'm so thankful when Jeannie was talking about the lessons that Jesus has been helping her learn and the special things that have happened and everything mm -hmm. through all this. And then she was coming to a close and I said, oh, Jesus, please don't let her stop. Please don't let her stop yet. I just can't. 
I've got to have more. And then she started talking about us and how we are beautiful. Yes. And the real you is beautiful like yeah. Adam and Eve. That's right, honey. And it was so special to me, and Jesus knew that I needed that. Yes. Because very few of you would understand why this is so, so special to me, but I have been going through some battles sure. about myself. And it's funny because professionals will tell you today, let it all hang out. You know, don't be afraid to be yourself. If you get mad, that's okay. That's the real you. But it's not. It's not right, honey. And I, I said to you the other day, I said, Dad, if we all did that, how many atomic bombs would be going off right mm -hmm. now? Reagan would push his button. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody would just go off the deep end if everybody right, just let. If there was no self-denial, right, what would this world be like? It'd be gone. Right, honey. And I was just so, so blessed when she said that because, and I thought, Jesus, what is wrong with me? Why do I just feel certain ways that are just stupid and tonight I realized that that's it's that's not me the real me is happy right, honey. and wants to be happy right, honey. and it's beautiful praise the Lord I'm thankful I know most of ordinary people I could sing it a cappello um, well you do yeah. you know what I was just going to tell you I was going to say honey get that and make it a part of your repertoire <laughs> do you know that I sure. believe if 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 I get stuck, maybe somebody could help me that might know it too. Oh, can you just stand up and sing it? <laughs> sure. Just ordinary people. God uses ordinary people. He uses people just like you and me who are willing to do. chooses people who will give him all no matter how small you all may seem to you because a little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand just ordinary people. God uses ordinary people. He uses people just like you and me who are willing to do as He commands. God chooses people who will give him all no matter how small your all may seem to you because a little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand oh just like that little lad who gave Jesus all he had. How the multitude was fed with the fish and the loaves of bread. What you have may not seem much, but when you yield it to the touch of the Master's loving hand, then you will understand how your life could never be the same. Just ordinary people. God uses ordinary people. He uses people just like you and me who are willing to do as he commands. God chooses people who will give him all. No matter how small your all may seem to you, because little becomes much when you play
place it in the master's hand his hand oh your little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand praise the lord I didn't know who in the house knew it, but I found out, didn't I? Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, my, 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 my. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, dear ones, we've had a service. Holy Spirit has helped us, led us, and guided us. Yes, sir. Yeah. This thing might be uh, worth getting. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I tell you, brother, I tell you, mm. when she closed out there, yeah. I had to, by the grace of God, I'm unworthy, but it was like Jim Wright was up there preaching. Yes, brother, sir. Brother, fire was a flying. Amen. Man, the close of that message. Yes, sir. Was a pretty wonderful yeah, thing. The whole message everybody. was good, I but said, now, I tried to tell everybody that she was a preacher, but that it was about I didn't even have half belief in the place. So the Lord might have been just a little bit perturbed about it, just put one on us. Right. Well, I can tell. See, you see, my words were not idle. I was trying to say, does anybody remember? Now, if you've been with me more than twelve years, when have I ever talked like that or tried to point that out? I did tonight. When Terry felt the fire of God as if Jim Wright were preaching. Yeah, but I, I really, brother, I agree. Yeah, yes, sir. Such a special, wonderful way. Oh, I'm indebted to Jesus. Oh, I love the Lord. Amen. I tell you, God's so good, that just can't be told. But he, I like to try to tell him. Oh, I like to try it. Amen. He's so sweet and so wonderful and tastes so good. I tell you to drink of his blood and eat of his flesh because I know it's got to be done. It's, it's a wonderful thing. I want to be a part of him. Brother, I'm so thankful for this, for this time, for the Light family and for Jeannie, for, her, for the glow of God upon her tonight and for the fire of God coming through her. It's been, a, it's been a high privilege to be here and to partake of this communion tonight. I love God and I'm very thankful. Again, I'm thankful as you express words for Daniel, for Johnny, for John. Oh, oh the, the, the family, I'm so thankful that God would let them come and be with us. And um, so thankful that as a printer, I even feel I feel comfortable in the presence of, uh, of Daniel Light. You know, as a man that uh, goes in a different walk of life, I feel by the grace of God, he, God helps him to make me feel right at home. As and it, it's a it's a beautiful thing. So I thank God for it. I thank God for His servants. His true servants make you feel at home, boy. They 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 want to hear if God's put something on your heart. And it's, it's beautiful, brother, and I'm thankful that you're that away, that God has made you that away, that you've been receptive, that you would see this in Jeannie years ago. Well, the moment, almost the moment I arrived, in God's grace, I thought, oh, Jesus, what in the world is in her heart? Why? Why, Jesus, she loves you. See, she was converted from the fall. So the year we arrived, somewhere around that time, we could see Brother Helm and I talked on the phone. More than once, say, "Oh, Oliver, isn't it wonderful?" Yeah, thank There's you, Jesus. Special in her heart. Yeah, well, it operates with me, brother. When you yeah. say it, it really operates you with me. See in her explanations, her experiences, and it's a very, it's a gift like Mary Webster has. Yes, we is. Yes. And I thought, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful. Amen. Open the door, let her yeah. speak to us tonight. Oh, I, I'm grateful to get to hear it, brother. I, I was pretty thrilled. I tell you, she, oh, she did a couple more statements there. Yeah. Oh, I was uh, hanging on over here. Yes, I just uh, yes, sir. to hold on. I tell you, it was so rich and good. It was a filling my soul and yes, giving a yes, cleansing yes, to my heart, yes, brother. Sir. I'm so hungry for it today. And I need it so desperately. But I thank God for the privilege of coming to his house and yes, hearing sir. the words sent through a handmaid of God. Praise now, the Lord. The reason you're like this is because by God's grace, you're pure hearted. And you are you. That's the reason you feel that way. 
that you do about her and it's what, why you felt come through her what you felt. It's because you have a pure heart. That's the reason. I just wanted you to know about it by God's grace. I know I've been with him, Daddy, all these years. That's why he's like he is. You know, we got to have an offering before we and stand on the promises before we go out. You know who this offering's for? This is for Pastor Dave because so many of our men are out of work and the paychecks have fallen so low until we can't pay his paycheck this week. So let's just, let's just get it tonight, okay? All right. Yeah, I give the announcements, Barry, and then we'll, we'll take it up here for this special service tonight. We thank you, Lord, that all of us are ordinary, but all of us are special. And all are priests of God that have been touched by the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the special time and for all these days have meant to us. And thank you tonight for the communion of saints. And thank you for the privilege of this offering. Though we give it to your servant, his wife, and his family, that they may have income this week, we give it unto thee. Sanctify it, O Lord, we pray. Amen.
we're going to have something said just before we sing the closing song. Guy, yes. You that there's a that there's a dark room going in right up here. Uh, Debbie Hill is a graduate of journalism and photography. I'm not sure what her actual degree is, but she's a journalist and a photographer, and she's been very helpful to us. And we've uh, have a little uh, a very nice dark room right up here in this end of the back behind the stage, and it's a beautiful place. Her uh, several of the men genial. Her father working Tuesday night when I came by, saw the choir and walked up there and saw that they were working. And there's going to be some fine work come out of there and Debbie will be working freelance. So this building is probably one of the most used. Do you know a church that has a dark room in it and, a, and an art studio and a, a vocal room and a, a music, multipurpose, everything room? <laughs> huh? And a radio station? When's that coming? In a few weeks, a radio station. And well, anyway, we're thankful. I do. Want, I want you to know one thing: you, you get your money out of this building. That is, this building is not wasted. It really is used, and we risk something by that. It means wear and tear, but it also means an investment of, in lives that would not ordinarily be. And we're thankful for that. Praise the Lord. I want you to turn to, are we clear? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, Jim. I'd like to, to uh, give thanks this evening for Lord answering prayer. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> I got up this morning and had a special prayer. And uh, come to find out later on the, this evening, I think it, I feel like it saved my brother's life. And Amen. I really feel good about it. Praise the I Lord. I prayed the Lord this morning to protect my family. Yes, sir. And all my brothers. And he works where they have these real high oil rigs. Yes, sir. You know, real, real big, real heavy. And the whole rig collapsed today, 240 tons, and it missed him by, by not quite two feet. Well, I want to thank Jesus, Jim. And I'm so thankful oh, for that. Oh, Jim, we're thankful with you. And uh, I, I t told him that he came home today while I was down at his house just for a few minutes. He don't even know why he came home. Just for a few minutes and I was there. I never thought about that just till right now. Yes, sir. He didn't stay five minutes. Yes, sir. And I told him, I said, son, I don't want you to be aggravated with me. And don't be upset with me. But you know, I prayed for you this morning. Amen. And I believe the Lord helped you. Yes, sir. And he told me, he said, you know, you're not the first person that said that today. Yeah. He said, somebody must have been watching over me. Yes. And there was five other fellows that, that missed by the same well, amount. I'm sure thankful so for So I'm Jesus. so thankful for that this Amen, evening. Jim. And I hope that I've helped my brother in some way, that it might you open have. his eyes up you, a little bit more, you have. that he, he can see the Lord. You were faithful, Jim. And I, I praise the Lord for praise that. Praise the Lord. And the Lord's helping me tremendously. Glory I feel to God. real good in my heart. Thankful to Jesus. And, uh, Helps us. And Jeannie is a pretty good preacher. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, Jim and Jody love her singing like all of us, but probably were not aware that she had this gift. Praise the Lord. We're thankful. Well, yes, David, our chairman of the board. I want to thank Jesus for John White. Hallelujah. Oh, for the years and for his dedication, his love, and most of all, for just being John Light. Amen. <laughs> He's such a beautiful man. Yes, sir. I true. love him. I'm thankful for him. Uh, he's so beautiful. Uh, Jeannie's so beautiful. Why, the way she shared, my goodness. How, what in the world? Yeah, David. Oh, but it just didn't happen overnight. Right, it's true. There was, uh, there was a lot of words said when she was two years old, three right. years old, four years old, five yes. years old. Yes. And uh, I sure want to thank Jesus for it. I, I couldn't, uh, I don't think I should have uh, let the service end by God's grace unless thank I was thank thankful you, for uh, John Light. And, yes. Uh, I don't know how many years young he is, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, he has... Uh, thousands and wisdom and knowledge Amen. and plain beauty and truth. 
Amen. And uh, I've always thought he's been holding on with two hands. He's always seemed to me like he's been holding well, on with two hands. He's just moving and, up. And he's he's always been uh, so kind to me. Now, you know, in the sound of music, I got to help him dress. Right. And I got to be with him. That's great. Why? Lady. Why? It's, it's always fun. <laughs> I never had anything but a smile. It's always fun. And Thankful, so gifted. Uh, such an artist. And uh, yes. all of the kids are so gifted and wonderful, too. Praise and, the Lord. But the... Uh, Dad just sits back and doesn't say much sometimes, and they just sort of fly by me, you know. Mm -hmm. But those gifts came from someplace. Right. And uh, right. I want to be thankful for him. Praise thankful for his exhortations before he speaks. A lot of times and sings, he says, now I'm going to say, well, the, about every time he says something, it's pretty good. Right. And the truth of the matter is, we're, we're, uh, our hearts aren't quite like his, or we hear it a lot better. And uh, I'm thankful for him. Praise, so praise the, Lord. the Lord. And thank you, Hallelujah, Dad. David. Brother Ham told me years ago that we owe so much to John and Mary Hannah. He said to me, son, it would be good for you to treat John and Mary Hannah as if they were your own mother and father. He told me that many years ago. I said, Brother Ham, I already feel like that anyway. He said, it would be good if you could take, try to take care of them just like your own mother and father and try to fill in for Dan and Johnny who cannot be in the valley proper. He told me that. Well, I've tried to, and we've, we've had a wonderful time by God's grace. But the marvelous thing is they came to love us all and to include us all, and now it's, it's pretty widespread. This umbrella has gone out pretty far, and it's great. want to pray for Dad as he goes to Muskegon and uh, wherever else God takes him, that he be a witness for Jesus in different places. He might meet somebody who's lost their companion who may not know of the joy and the victory and the love and the peace that God has given him, who's not known the joy of commitment. And uh, he's committed to give God the praise and the glory and to tell anybody about Jesus where the Lord would open the door for him. So who knows? We may have a wonderful story when Dad gets back. Praise the Lord. Yes, Patty. Yes. Friday morning, what time? At 10 o'clock, you see, I'm speaking at it. I don't even know what time, or I can't remember. But my secretary will tell me before the 10 o'clock hour, I can tell you. Uh, 10 o'clock, and, and all that can come that's not working, they would appreciate it, wouldn't they? That's what Lyndall told us. So we'll be here, and I'm kind of excited about my subject. Really. They that live by the sword shall die by the sword. And uh, kind of excited about it. Praise the Lord. Brother Keith. Lord knows I didn't want to be up again tonight. <laughs> Surely. But you know, we were in New York City one night. Yes, sir. And the Lord moved. Uh, and Keith? a great amount of us missed it. Keith, that is so wonderful. That's we came in this heart. service at 7.30 and... God's hand has been on it Keith, every so step of the way. It's so wonderful, Keith. Now, I say that to say this. You've tried to tell us things for years. Now, if the ones of us that haven't heard too good will stop and we'll admit to ourselves that we didn't listen, that we didn't hear, if we'll have an honest heart. Good. All you've got to do to have an honest heart is admit that, when you're wrong. That's so good. Like the lady said, just be yourself. That's good, Keith. That's right on. And if you're yourself and what God created, you'll have an honest heart. Yeah, that's good, Keith. It's the truth. I wanted to do what you did tonight in New York. I wanted to grab my handkerchief for a flag and just run around the place. Because <laughs> God was yeah. surely moving. God was surely trying to teach us something. We've got a revival coming up. Yes, sir. If we'll admit to ourselves tonight that we need that honest heart, admit where we're wrong, and ask God to forgive us, we'll be ready. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. God. Praise the Lord. Oh, Keith, thank you for being faithful. Praise the Lord for his faithfulness. I was going to get up. Yes, sir. Just to show you how wonderful Jesus is. I was going to get up and say, congregation, pastor's tired. 
And the Lord said, pray. Yeah, God said, said pray. pray, don't do it. I said, Jesus. See, I want to get up because the Lord told me that he was shot before the service tonight. Yeah, told me. Yeah. Told me that he was at the, at clear out, yeah, my, washed out. My strength Before we even started. Yes, sir. And so, you know, I was just, uh, you can imagine, I'm yeah. just trusting with him and trusting with you. And uh, hoping that we'd just obey the Lord and not just, you know, share, just to be sharing because I was pretty tired. And I started to get up. And, and I said, Jesus, what is that? I said, is that a check or important? He said, it's a check. Don't you get up? Yeah. And Keith jumped up. Right there. And I had the witness in my heart over and over and yeah. over. And I would have stopped him. If, if yeah. I got up, I would have yeah. stopped him. Oh, Jesus, and I see, you. I just plead the blood. Yeah. Because I wouldn't want to stop that. Yeah, don't turn. No. Don't I, turn. See, and I just want to praise the Lord for helping us stay in our seat. One of the most wonderful things that he did was respond positively yes. to the fact that he felt that he failed yeah. at the TWA terminal. Yes. When Brother Ham asked us after 36 or 38 hours of travel from Bombay, yeah. India, and after being exhausted from being over there for days and days and days, right. and he asked us to stand and sing uh, the doxology, yes. I believe in Alive Alive. Right. Uh, Dan remembers. I remember that. And, and just as soon as we started, we were so worn. We were so tired. It was, oh. But just as soon as we started, I, I felt the power of God. And I thought, oh, Jesus, it's possible for Holy Ghost Revival to start the TWA terminal. Yes. And I saw it. Yes, sir. And, I, and I, wanted to, I wanted to alert all of our group because uh, half of us were not responding to Brother Helm or maybe a little more. And I was singing with all my might, trying to sing Amazing Grace. I believe we sung two or the doxology. I can't remember both, maybe. And I, and I thought, well, Jesus, if I could. And I wanted to get a, I wanted to get the, the uh, a rod or something. And I wanted to, I wanted to wave it in front of the people and say, oh, oh, wake up, wake up. If you'll respond, we may have Holy Ghost revival in just a minute. Wake up, wake up. Oh, we we, we haven't been asleep for 36 hours, but oh, wake up, wake up. That's what I wanted to do. I saw Mrs. Him. Oh, she was wide awake. She knew what was happening. Yes. And uh, now when I, when we explained that, when I witnessed to that, of course, the Holy Spirit said we could have had Holy Ghost revival there in TWA terminal at that late hour, midnight, or later, or around midnight, have, oh, it was awful, it was packed, it was jammed, we were late, we'd missed our flights, it was, oh, it was a situation, and yet God warned us, had attention. And the wonderful thing about Keith was, he didn't say, oh, he didn't act, he said, Jesus, help me not to miss it next time. That's been his prayer ever since. And so that's why God had him up tonight. Yes, sir. God, want, God didn't want him to miss it. No. Why, well, Stephen, and it, God would tell you, yeah, don't now, get well, up. now, Stephen, don't get up because he's trying to do right. He's trying to help us all and help me too. Yes. And God said, don't get up. Don't get up. And of course, I've got more strength now than I had when I started. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. I, I, I'll have to go home and lie down, but I, I'm feeling good now. Yes. Isn't that wonderful? You're up in the Spirit. I'm up in the Spirit, standing on the promises. Amen. 323. Amen. Let's stand. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, <Lord. laughs>
Beautiful. Praise the Lord. A while ago when I didn't share what I told Stephen uh, about what I saw uh, for David, simply because I didn't remember. Uh, he, Stephen's recall is so great, and I couldn't remember any details. But uh, I do want you to know that both Dave and I have a desire to be, as these and all of you who are hungry and honest for Jesus, to be the kind of person that God wants us to be. And it's a wonderful thing to know that the Holy Spirit gives that assurance and that God will help us in things to come. And uh, whatever way God wants to tell us that he will help us and that he will help us to become what we want to become. I'm telling you, I need it and you need it and we all need it. And we stand on those promises. Praise the Lord for his grace. I did not think I was ready to dismiss a little before nine, thinking that tonight's a night we'll go home and rest again. We've had a full service. It's been great. God has blessed us. And we're richer by far than before the service. And in a way, it's sort of a, it's sort of a, a completing, it's kind of a complete unit of the carnation service. From here we go in the challenge of it. From here we go in the love of it. From here we go in the beauty of it. And God takes us on to help somebody that needs help along the way. May we love each other and be strengthened. The only message I would have had on my heart tonight was forget not to love one another. Forget not to love one another. Do not lose the vision of each one in Christ. And then finally I'd like to say, without Jesus, you cannot deny yourself. Without his beauty and his love and his strength, one cannot do it. But the power of the resurrection can give us death to carnality before death in the body. There's a resurrection to be had before the resurrection. And that resurrection is what you really are. That's what it means to be born again. That's what it means to be sanctified. It's not those old terms that raise such red flags. No, it means to be what you are in Christ. And Christ in us, the hope of glory. Praise the Lord. Happy birthday, Peter. Is it today? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Peter. Happy birthday to you. In our presence tonight is a servant of Jesus Christ. He is a pastor of the Louisville Christ Fellowship. He is a friend of ours. He wrote me one of the most beautiful letters I've ever received not too long ago. I want to acknowledge that at this moment and give God the praise and the glory that you had a pastor who loved us. And even though he's not in the Revival for a Day Fellowship proper, he's in the Fellowship of Christ. He's a beautiful man. And uh, we love him very much. He stood for us in very rough places. His name was Robert Royer. And he brought to your church another servant of Jesus for which out of that leading he suffered. But he brought him anyway. And that servant's name was Robert Morgan. He also brought another servant. And that was me. And you loved us. And you felt your call to preach the gospel. And you now are a pastor. Pastoring a beautiful people and we see you we have the privilege of seeing you once in a while and we're very delighted brother Lloyd would you come and to the microphone and lead us in the closing prayer praise the Lord it's a humble servant of Jesus and he has helped us in this service praise the Lord, praise the Lord Amen. Amen Paul glory to God
Let us pray. Father, we thank Thee for Thy mercy. Thank You for the forgiveness of sins. Thank You, Jesus, for the washing of water by Thy Word. We thank Thee, O Heavenly Father, for the presence of the Holy Spirit that we have sensed this evening, for Your guidance and mercy. We're so in debt to Thee for Thy guidance and love. We thank Thee for the call of God to our hearts that you would somehow see fit to bring us out of darkness into the kingdom of thy marvelous light, into the kingdom of thy Son. We praise thee, Jesus, for thy many blessings and helps to us this evening. Our hearts have been thrilled and stirred in thy presence. We pray, Jesus, that you'll help us to become more and more of what you have created us to be in the image of God. We know that, uh, Father, you called us to yourself so that Jesus might be the firstborn among many brethren. And we pray that we might become more and more conformed to the image of Christ. Pray, Jesus, that you'll help uh, Pastor Hogue. Encourage him to strengthen his body this evening. Give him rest, O God. Help him to recover quickly from this service. And uh, we want to praise thee again for your guidance, grace, help, love protection. Thou art worthy of all praise. In Jesus' name, we thank the old Lamb of God. Amen.